And then now we have our scatter plot. And notice what you see here. We have volume, and even though SPSS by default increments the x axis by 0.2, there really is just a 1 and a 2 in this graph. And you can see the values here. These are the exam scores, which are shown on the y axis for people who had no volume, the 1, and then exam scores for people who studied under the high volume condition, which was a 2. And notice here that these exam scores for no volume, or 1, tend to be higher than the exam scores for high volume, or 2. There's certainly some overlap, and sometimes a person who studied under high volume did better, like this value right here, than some people who studied under no volume. But overall, the trend is that the mean of these values here is in fact higher than the mean of these values here, and it's significant. Now we could go ahead and create a regression line here, or a, a line that reflects or illustrates the relationship here. And I'll just go ahead and click on this right here. And I double clicked the graph to open up the chart editor box. So click on that. And then here for properties, I'm going to select uh, linear, which is the default selection. I'm going to deselect attach label line, click apply, and then close. And notice here now, you see a downward slope. Well, a downward slope is also a negative slope. And you can see, going back to our output here for correlations, that the correlation was in fact negative, which reflects this negative slope. And the fact, once again, that it's significant indicates that the average exam scores for the no volume here is significantly higher than the average exam scores for the high volume group here. Okay, now, one last thing. It may seem a little strange calculating a correlation with a dichotomous and a continuous variable. Most people probably are used to seeing correlations with two continuous variables. But we can do this. It's not a problem. And in fact, just to uh, convince you a little bit more that this is okay, normally if we had data like this, or we have dichotomous and continuous, or interval or ratio data, we would typically run a t-test, specifically an independent samples t-test. So let's go ahead and do that and see what happens. I'm going to go to Analyze, Compare Means, Independent Samples t-test. Go ahead and select that. We'll put exam scores as our test variable, move volume to grouping variable, and then for define groups, click on that. Group 1, we coded with a 1. Group 2 is a 2. So click Continue, and then OK. And what I want to do here is zero in on the p-value. Notice this p-value of 0 0.014. That should look familiar because we saw that, in fact, just a minute ago. 0 0.014 for my t-test is the exact same as 0 0.014 for my correlation. So notice the significance test, the p-value, is the exact same, which really tells us that we're running the same test effectively. In other words, you can go from R to T or T to R, and I'm not going to show the formula here in the interest of time, but you can actually do that. You can go from R to T, and the fact that these p-values, once again, are the exact same, really indicates that we are running the same test, or that the two tests, I should say, are equivalent statistically. And running the t-test does get you the means as well. And we can see that the no music group had a mean score of 84.9, whereas the high volume group had a mean score of 77.5. So there was about a 7.5 almost point difference between the two groups. And once again, that's reflected in a different way, but identical test-wise with the correlations table that gives us a p-value of 0 0.014 as well. So in summary, a point by serial correlation coefficient is calculated when you have a dichotomous variable and a continuous variable, or another way to think about it, a variable with interval or ratio uh, level values. This concludes the presentation on the point by serial correlation in SPSS. Thanks for watching.